How great is our God. Name above all names. Worthy of all praise. My heart will sing how great is our God. Name above all names, you're worthy of all praise, and my heart will sing how great is our God. God, sing with me how great is our God, oh, we'll see how great, how great is our God, how great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. Oh, we'll see how great, how great is our God. Name above all names. Of all praise, my heart will sing how great is our God. Name above all names, worthy of all praise. Our hearts will sing how great is our God. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. Oh, we'll see how great. How great is our God, how great is our God, sing with me how great is our God, oh we'll see how great, how great is our God. Name above all names, worthy of all praise. Our hearts will sing how great it is our God. Our hearts will sing how great is our God. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. We give you the honor, we give you the glory of everlasting Father. We thank you for this day. 
We thank you for this gathering. Lord, we are here for you. Your children are gathered not for me, but they're gathered for you. To experience your power, to experience the hand of God, to feel your presence, we are here for you. Lord, I plead the blood of everybody on this line. If there's anything we've done knowingly or unknowingly, intentionally, or unintentionally, individually, and collectively, let the blood of Christ, which was shed for the remissions of our sins, let it begin to speak better, better things on our behalf than the blood of Abel. Lord, I pray that you flow. I pray that you move. I pray that you touch your children where they need to be touched. Even if tonight is a night of deliverance, I pray that you set them free from the snares of the enemy. I pray that you deliver them from the hand of strange children, that you pour them out of the fire. Break every yoke over their lives. Destroy every yoke that is on their neck. Every veil covering their eyes, let it be torn. Every chain around their waist, let it be broken. Lift up your head, O ye gates, and be ye lifted of lights and doors, that the King of glory may enter. Jesus, we invite you into our presence. We invite you into our midst. We pray that you enter. We pray that you flow. We pray that you move like you've never moved before. Move like you've never moved before. For it is not by power, nor is it by might, but it is by the Spirit of the living God. I come against every plan of the enemy. Every gathering in the demonic realm against this gathering, let it be scattered in the name of Jesus. Every projected word against this service, let it be, let it come to not this moment in the name of Jesus. There is no enchantment against Jacob, nor is there any divination against Israel. I come against every distracting spirit, every spirit of distraction, every spirit of slumber. Leave this moment in the name of Jesus. I cover everybody on this line with the precious blood. Every limitation and every hindrance in the realm of the spirit, let it be broken. I command the atmosphere be conducive for the operations of the Holy Spirit. Spirit of living God, I pray that you begin to flow. Flow, hover over our houses this evening. Hover over our lives, over our families. Hover over our generation. Hover. Touch us, break yokes, break strongholds. Deliver your people. Let there be healings. Mahadigalu undoli bagar hango idaraba. Ruin dagaduli zidi bagaduli imahanga. Let the anointing of the living God begin to flow. This moment. Let it begin to flow. Let it begin to flow. Let it begin to flow. Yes, He's already touching some of you. He's already, already. Touching some of you guys receive it. Ka ilahaga, yeli anzodabogo. I thank you, Jesus. I give you the glory. I give you the honor. Receive the adoration this evening. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. I thank you guys for being on the line tonight. Tonight, I, I won't do that much talking about what the Holy Spirit leads me to, but I'll do more praying. I'll do more praying. I wanted to speak on the topic called the Why Jesus. Why? Why Him? Why Him out of everybody else? When we have all these religions and all these doctrines, these beliefs, we have all these things, and we have the atheists saying we evolved from monkeys and we have Muslims and, 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 and people who do Hindu and, and Buddhism and, and occultism and witchcraft. Why are you living the life of a Christian? 
If this is a question that you cannot answer, then you're most likely just living a religious lifestyle. If you cannot differentiate the difference between Christ and every other thing in this world, then you're not living the life that God wants you to live. You're doing it just to do it. You're doing it just to do it. Christ, we have the entire Bible, 66 books, over 40 authors, all pointing to one message, all pointing to one theme. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Everything in the Bible just points to that one verse. Everything in the Bible leads to Christ, even the Old Testament. For the Old Testament, some some people in theology believe that the Old Testament is just Christ conceived, which it is. And the New Testament is Christ revealed. Because Christ did show up a matter of t a number of times in the Old Testament, but that's not our topic this evening. Why Christ? If somebody asks you, if somebody comes up to you and they say, why do you serve this God? What is so special about him? Why do you love him so much? Are you going to point him to a bunch of scriptures? Are you going to say, wait, let me Google it? Are you going to come up with all these defenses and these, and these arguments? Or can you speak from your own personal experience of what Christ has done for you? A lot of times as believers, even through evangelism, we try to get people to hear the word of God, but we don't live it. We come to them with doctrine, we come to them with reasons and scriptures and, and, and debates and, and what's right, what's wrong, this, that, and that. And even though we're right, in a sense, it just pushes them away from Christ. Why? Because you're not practical. Why? Because you can't give them something that God has done for you. You can't say, this is why I serve this God. Even when I talk to people, I evangelize to them. And when it's funny because God, he'll literally have random people message me. People I haven't talked to in years. Even people I don't remember talking to, I don't remember meeting. They message me randomly and say, oh, I was just scrolling through my contacts and I saw you. And I was wondering who you were. And I'll lead them to Christ through that. But when we talk, I don't say, you know, this, that, you know, you got to do this, you got to do that. No, I don't say that. I don't come to them with all these, these theologies and, and the strong reasons and whatnot. I come to them based off of experiential knowledge and the leading of the Holy Spirit. So you can argue from day to night, but the Holy Spirit can give you one word that will transform somebody's life, even an atheist. And so a lot of you have argued with an atheist before. You, you know how they are. Morning to night. Morning to night. You can go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth with them. But if you don't have anything tangible, you just leave that conversation drained. You just leave it drained. You just leave it drained. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but it's in power. A lot of us have too many words, but not enough power. We're not living like Christ. We talk Sometimes we talk like him, but we don't walk like him. We can tell you what he did from Matthew to Revelation, but we can't demonstrate anything he demonstrated. Why is that? What is the issue? And we go through all these things in our life, but we don't understand that Christ has done what he's need to, what he's needed to do. His job is finished. He's seated at the right hand of the Father forever, interceding for us. Forever interceding for us. So if you're following Christ based off of what he's doing for you, if you're following Christ based off of what you're receiving from him, then you're following him for the wrong reason. You're following for the wrong reason. Then why Jesus? What's the point of following him? 
Because Christ accomplished a significant amount of things the moment he died on that cross and resurrected. Now, what are those things that Christ accomplished? And I believe as I say these things, it will break strongholds in your mind. One of those things that Christ accomplished was called expiation. That is the removal of our sin and our guilt. A lot of times we fall into certain things. We repent. We start living a clean life, but our mind just goes back. It goes back and you say, man, maybe God can't use me because of what I did the other day. You'll say, man. And, 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 that, and, that, and that guilt and that shame, it, it's literally a spirit and it weighs you down. It stops the flow of God from flowing through you. You'll think that it's, it's God choosing not to do something, but it's you hindering him, hindering him. Because Christ has already accomplished expiation. Another thing that he accomplished, I'll tell you a story about it, about the expiation. I'll tell you a story. There was a lady, there was a, la- there was a great man of God who was speaking, he said there was a lady who wanted to pray in tongues. And she went from man of God to man of God to man of God, to man, but she could not yield her tongue for some reason. And so she met him, and she, and she, and, and, and she said, and he asked her, have you ever had an abortion before? Then she broke down and she started crying. She confessed. He rebuked the spirit of guilt and shame. And then even before, he didn't even pray for her to receive the gift. She just started flowing in it. Why? Because that guilt and that shame, it it caused a, it was like a dam blocking the, the rivers of living water. It was stopping the flow of God from moving. It was stopping her from entering into the next dimension in her walk with Christ. And that's what that same guilt And that same shame does to a lot of believers, a lot of us. We've all gone through it before. But I'm here to tell you, under the new covenant, there's no reason for you to live in guilt and in shame because Christ has brought you out of it. He's removed that sin and that guilt. Another thing that Christ accomplished was propitiation. What is that? Now, since our sins and our guilt was removed, now propitiation refers to the removal of God's wrath. By dying in our and in, in, for our sake, Christ removed that wrath. So instead of every time, every because you know how the Old Testament God was just you know every little thing. His wrath will come upon the people, and they'll smite them down. But in the, pre- in the in the for our place, whenever you do something, and God holds up that bolt of thunder to strike you where you are, He remembers Christ, who died in your place. Now, this isn't a reason to wallow in sin, because you'll still end up dead and and in hell. But this is a reason for you to understand that there is no reason to fear while in Christ. There is no condemnation against those that are in Christ Jesus. For those in Christ Jesus. So Christ has removed our wrath. Another thing that he accomplished was reconciliation. Reconciliation. Now, what is that? You see, when Adam and Eve ate that fruit, they were cut off from God. Cut off completely. That relationship, that intimacy that they had with him was cut off, and they were cast out of the Garden of Eden. And now... And everything that they would have received while in God, they couldn't receive it because they were no longer under him. You know, it takes a man under authority to operate in authority. So now through the death of Christ, through the death of Christ, we are reconciled with God. As I was saying the other night, Christ is our prophet, our priest, and our king. 
This reconciliation deals with the priest aspect. We're able to speak to God, have a direct communication with Him. He's there for us. We're there for Him. We know it. You don't have to run from pillar to post to understand that God loves you. Because Christ dying on the cross shows that love. Another thing that we received through the death of Christ was redemption. Redemption. A lot of people are in captivity. There's no reason for you to be in bondage, to be in captivity, to be suffering, to be tormented. When Christ has died for your redemption, because it's our sins that put us in captivity. So if you're living a life of Christ, if you're living godly, if you're living, if, if, if you don't have any open doors in your life, then the devil has no right to afflict you or to torment you. Because you've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Christ redeemed us even from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. One thing that Christ did was defeat the powers of darkness. When he rose up, our power was given to him. And in the sound of his name, every knee shall bow in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. Now, I want you to understand this. That God had to come down and accomplish these things on his own. The new covenant, listen to this, listen to this carefully. The new covenant was not established with you. It wasn't established with you and me. It was established with Jesus. God made that covenant with Jesus. Because Jesus fulfilled the law. He made that covenant with Jesus. Because Jesus is the only one who was, unable, who, who was able to not break him. Who was able to not break that covenant. Why do I say this? Why do I say this? Because you have to understand that it's not until you're under Christ that you can receive these things. Not until you're under Christ that you can receive these things. All of us as human beings, all of us as human beings, we are all creations of God. We are creations of God. But in order to be sons of God, you have to receive salvation. In order to be a son of God, you have to be intimate with Christ. And it's when you're a son of God that everything that Christ accomplished on the cross, it's given to you. Now, why is that important? Because a lot of people believe that it is by works that they are saved. That is not wrong. That is not right. You're saved by grace through faith. That authority, that power you're given, is not given to you. It's given to Christ. The, how you can look at it is a police officer. He can stand in the middle of the road with his uniform and stop cars. Stop cars. But as soon as he takes off that uniform and he tries to do that, he'll probably get hit. Why? Because that uniform, him putting that on, is a symbol of authority. That he's not being backed by himself, but he's being backed and his authority is through the nation, the government. So a lot of us, we try to stop the plans of the enemy. We try to stop the fiery darts. We try to do all these things while we don't even have our uniforms on. We're not completely covered by God. Why? Because we have broken the hedge. Now the serpent strikes us. We try to operate in power, but we can't. Why? Because we're not complete, complete, completely submitted to Jesus. It's not until you are completely submitted to him that you live life as a whole Christian. 
You don't live life as a defeated Christian, a sad Christian, a depressed Christian, a Christian who's who's in bondage and who's in slavery, who's being tormented when they sleep, who's being tormented when they dream, who's being afflicted by spirits of lust, perversion, sedu seduction, rejection, fear, rejection, fear, rejection. Fear of rejection of all these afflictions and burdens and bondages and yokes. You don't have to live like that. We've taken away our uniforms. We've thrown it aside because we feel as if there's no freedom in it. And it's more fun being in the world. But you can't, you, you can't war against the powers of darkness when you are working with them. I repeat that. You can't war against the powers of darkness when you are working with them. Whether you're doing it knowingly or unknowingly, if you have an avenue in your life that the enemy is using to afflict you, then you cannot be an effective, effective vessel for the hands of God. And I see a lot of people get scared. They're scared of demons, they're scared of witches, they're scared to do deliverance. Oh, that's not my ministry. They're scared of all these things. Why? Because they think that their power is in themselves. And to me, that's a form of pride. Because you completely neglect everything that Jesus died for on the cross. And you begin to believe that you are your source of power. You begin to believe that you are your source of strength, of hope, of peace. You begin to do all these things to bring some sort of peace to you, some sort of joy to you, some sort of happiness to you, but you neglect the fact that Jesus died on that cross, and in Him is everything you ever need. Everything you'll ever need is in Him. And you find your peace somewhere else. Like I was just having a discussion with a young lady about yoga. You know, to relax, to find peace. Find peace for what? I will keep those whose minds are stayed in me in perfect peace. That's the peace of God that passes all understanding. I'm sad, I'm depressed, you know, I got to do this. I need a 10 step for this, I need a 10 step for that. I need to relax, meditate, do some yoga, do this, do when the Lord has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, peace, and of a sound mind. So where are we getting it wrong? We just neglect everything that Christ has done on that cross for us. And we suffer. And let me tell you, just because you're the one suffering doesn't mean you'll be judged for your suffering. Because you're not going to go to heaven and say, God, I didn't even know, know that Christ did this for me. You know, and, and, and you'll be tormented all your life on earth. You'll live a defeated Christian life and you can't even be an effective witness for God. Then you get to heaven, you, you, you get to heaven and you try to give God an excuse. You think he's going to take that? You think you can stand in the presence of the Almighty and say, you know, I was scared. I was scared. Why should you be scared when Christ has not given us the spirit of fear? I was scared, you know, maybe if I pray for this person, the demon is going to go from them and, uh, and it will hurt me. I'll be attacked. Why? When you've been given all power to trample upon scorpions and snakes on every, and over every power of the enemy, and nothing, nothing shall by the enemies hurt you. You know, I was scared, you know, um, somebody cursed me, I'm afraid, somebody may curse me. Why? There's no divination against Israel, no enchantment against Jacob. The curse caused this shall not arise. So what is the issue? I don't care how long something has been in your generation. I don't care how long your family has been struggling with this thing. I don't care how long you've had it in you, whether it's through your own works, whether it's through that those things that you did. I don't care. It doesn't matter. Your experiences don't matter. Your circumstances do not matter. Understand that. Nothing you'll go through, you've gone through, or you will go through matters. What matters is what Christ did on that cross what he did on that cross if you get yourself so focused on yourself and you forget about him you'll wonder why you you can't live a stable life because you're but a human but if you keep your eyes fixed on Elohim on Jesus you'll be in perfect 
peace, no matter what comes your way, no matter how the enemy tries to fight you, no matter how he tries to bring discouragement, you'll understand that your power is not in yourself. It's not in you. It's not in you. Even though you may exercise that authority, it's not in you. It's in Christ. It's immutable. It never changes. Even though I may stand there and, and call out demons and command them to leave you, the power is not in me. It's in Christ. It's in Christ. I don't do anything. I just talk. It's not, it's, it's not by power, nor by might. It's not by how much I yell, how much I scream. It's by the Spirit of the living God. You understand? So I was telling you guys the other night about how God was taking me to a place of extreme faith in Him. That I don't need to do all this, all, all this other stuff. I don't even sometimes be, be, before we first got started, I would pray and I would feel the power of God on me. I would feel the Holy Ghost. I would feel sensations and fire and all of that. But we've gotten to I've gotten to a place where God is saying you don't need that anymore. Because not every time you pray for somebody that you'll feel something. So I literally pray for people. I'll be praying for people, and I won't feel a thing. But we'll still get testimonies after. So what you go through is unimportant. What you feel is unimportant. What that person has said about you, it's not important. What they've been calling you all your life, it is not important. What the doctors have said, the report they've given you, it's not important. What is important is what Christ did on that cross. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. That is what's important. That's what's important. So what are you going through this evening? What area of your life has the devil held you captive? Is it addiction? Is it a stronghold? Do you have a, a generational curse over your life? What is that area of your life which the enemy has held you captive? Listen, somebody, some people even go to their dreams and all they do is eat. And they'll wake up and they'll feel full and think, and they'll, and they'll think it's a good thing. It's not a good thing. The demons are feeding you all this garbage and you're just eating it. And some, mainly, and most of them are even initiating you into witchcraft and cults. And you think it's fun and games. That's a stronghold of the enemy. You'll be swimming in the sea. You think that's fun. In a dream, you swim in the sea. You think that's fun. That's a stronghold of the enemy. You'll be attacked at night. Demons will be tossing you here and there. And you can't even pray for an hour. They'll be throwing you against the wall. They'll be pulling you out of your body. They'll be holding you down in night terrors. They'll be raping you and, and doing all these things to you. But... You can't even understand what God did, has done for you on the cross. Due to your ignorance, you allow it to happen. You can't cry out to God and say, God, where were you? Jesus, where, where were you? Jesus has done everything he's supposed to do. He's asking you, will you open your eyes and receive those things which I have given unto you? That's what he's asking you this evening. A lot of people see themselves in their dreams with a, a, a ton of children. Always giving birth, always having children, always breastfeeding, all these things. And they think it's fun and games. They don't know that they've been having spiritual babies. And, and, and when they get older, sometimes they might not even ha be able to have kids. That's how it works in the spirit. You think it's a joke, but you don't understand the severity of how the spirit realm operates. And so many people are in bondage. You'll be sleeping and people will come to you in the form of you know, uh, different people. You'll see yourself getting married every day to a different person. Somebody, will, a, a, a demonic being will come to you in different forms to sleep with you. And some ladies even wake up feeling good about it. They don't know that they're selling their souls to the powers of darkness. This isn't a game. And we let the enemy play with us. 
but it's time. But when it's time to pray, we just pray soft and nicely, and ten minutes prayer, then we go to bed, and we wonder why the enemy torments us the way he does, because we don't even understand the authority which Christ has given unto us. You don't understand it. If you are in that situation this evening, don't blame Christ. Look at yourself. Look at your ignorance. Look at yourself. Don't say, oh God, where are you? Say, why haven't I tapped into that supernatural realm, that God, of those things, of those authority, that power which Christ released to me the day he died on the cross. That realm of dominion. And authority and power, why can't I operate in it when Christ has given this? You don't work for it. It's been given to you. It's been given to you like it was given to Adam, but he lost it. But now it's given to Christ. And as we are under Christ, we receive it back. You understand? No reason to be in bondage. No reason to be held captive by the enemy. No reason for the devil to play games with you. No reason for you to sit that back and be and be oppressed, be depressed. Every day you're crying over something new. Every, every day you're crying over the same thing over and over. Same old story, same old sob story. Same old depression, same old sadness. Every day you're getting angry at somebody new. Same old anger problem. Every day, every day you're sleeping with somebody. Same old lust problem. Every day is the same thing over and over and over again when Christ has completed his assignment and given you your freedom and your salvation, but you don't want to receive it. He's given you your deliverance, but you don't want to receive it. He's given you all things pertaining to life, life and death, but you don't want to receive it. You wake up, you cry. You repeat the same story the next day. Same old sickness, day in and day out. When are you going to stand up in boldness and authority and do what you need to do? And see, if I have to fast to build my faith, I will fast to build my faith. And if I die doing this fast, then it's on God, not me. How many of you are capable of doing that? But you rather wallow, wallow in your sickness, wallow in your in your shame, in your guilt, in your sin, in your addiction, in your bondage. Just wallow in it. Let the enemy just play games with you. Why is this? Why is this? That when, that is only when other people have failed us that we are, that we realize that Christ is there. We find our solution first in everybody else before coming to Christ. How disrespectful is that to Jesus? When everything you'll ever need is in Him. Your assurance, your stability, your peace, your hope, your deliverance, your freedom, it's in Him. Why do you search your why, why, why do you search for it in other people and other things? Search for acceptance in other people and other things. When it's in God, when it's in Jesus, imagine you, imagine you coming down to this earth, going through everything that Christ went through, the beatings and the shaming and, 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 being, and being tormented, being nailed on a cross, dying, just for the people who you've died for to just neglect everything you've ever done for them. And to find their situations and, and to find their solutions in, in the mere man and carnal and car, carnally. Find their solutions in yoga and trans meditation and, and, and go to every one of their friends before talking to Christ. So when you talk to Christ, he'll lead you to the right person. Sometimes I pray and God says, call this person. And when I call that person, they give me peace. But the other day I was in, I was feeling so down over a certain situation. And God said, call this brother who you haven't spoken to in a while. And I called him. And he gave me advice led by the Holy Spirit. 
but we want to go to everybody and their mother first before coming to Christ and let him show us who we need to talk to and let him show us where we need to go and let him show us what we need to do and receiving those things he's already given us to us. So what is the issue? Christ has done it. All you have to do is receive it this evening. I'm saying this for those who are receiving the deliverance at this moment and those who will receive the deliverance while I start praying for them. Because some of you are already being set free by just hearing this in your mind. Everything you'll ever need, you've ever needed, is in Christ. It's in Christ. Everything that you think that you can live without, He's already given it to you. You just have to receive it. How? By obedience. If you can't be obedient to Christ, if you can't keep your mind stayed on Him, then don't complain when the enemy attacks you. Don't complain when it comes to you with all the with, with the torments. Don't complain about it. Why? Because you haven't submitted yourself completely to Christ. You're not covered. You're not in that hedge. You've broken the hedge and the serpent will strike you. No if, ends, or buts. There's no gray area about it. It doesn't have to be a sin for it to be an idol. It doesn't have to be a sin for the devil to use it to torment you and afflict you. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be. If you're looking at the Ten Commandments and you're going off of that, then you have to live under the law. You'll be judged accordingly. But there are certain things. But there are certain things that you can only receive, that you can only be set free from through your obedience. This is another message in, in its entirety in itself. Through your obedience. But hearing this word, I know it's broken strong chords in your mind, in a lot of your minds. I know a lot of people are beginning to be set free. Because that imagination that has exalted itself over about the knowledge, the true knowledge of God, is being broken. The light is being shed in the darkness. Darkness comprehended it not. You'll be set free this evening. In the name of Jesus. So I'm going to pray for you guys this evening. I'm going to pray for you guys. Before I pray for you guys, I'm going to lead you on in some prayers. I'm not going to unmute the line. If you want your deliverance, you'll, you'll say it without me even having to unmute the line up here. But we're going to pray. I'm going to lead you on three major three types of prayers. Repentance, renounce, when you renounce certain things, and you, when you declare what Christ has done for you. And as you say these prayers with all your heart, and, and not forget forgiveness, when, when, when you say these prayers for, with all your heart, you'll be set free from whatever the enemy has been using to bar, keep you in bondage. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So I want you to get in a position where you're comfortable. You don't have to be standing up unless you're led to stand up. I was praying for her the other day, and she was standing up, and she said that she fell like two times. I said, just find somewhere to sit. You don't have to stand. If you want to stand, you can stand. If you want to kneel, you can kneel. If you want to sit, you can sit. Just be relaxed and listen to my voice. There's going to be a flow of deliverance over the line this evening. Every week, a lot of people... Things are going to be crying. Some of you may break out into tears. Mainly, that's what mainly happens. There's the tears. A few may throw up. Watch out for your yawning, your burping, coughing, spitting. These are the way, these are the avenues when these things happen. During a deliverance, you're receiving your release. So it's normal. It's not weird. It's not creepy. It's not scary. It's normal. Be mindful of pain, sensations in your body. If you feel a pain, so just put your hand there. If it was a personal prayer, I'd tell you to tell me where it was. So I'd direct that prayer accordingly. But since it's a mass deliverance session, you just put your hand on that place that you feel that pain. While I'm praying, if you feel a certain emotion come upon you, 
to pray against the emotion. If I'm praying for you automatically, you feel angry. You you just say, you spirit of anger, I command you to leave. A lot of times, this is serious. If you get aroused, you, you're battling with the spirit of lust. You say, spirit of lust, I command you to leave. It's happened on occasions. I've prayed for people and that has happened. That's the manifestation of the spirit of lust. You may get tired. That's the spirit of slumber, keeping you away from receiving your deliverance. You you commanded to leave if you get tired randomly or sleepy randomly. Things like that. It's, it's practical. So if you feel a certain way, think about it. What is it? It's the spirit behind it, commanded to leave, even while I'm praying for you, and you receive your deliverance this evening. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. So, just relax and close your eyes. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. And I want you guys to repeat after me. Repeat after me. I'm going to begin right now. Say, in the name of Jesus, I come to you unworthy of your love and your grace. I come to you unworthy of those things you have given to me. I repent for my sins. I repent for my past life. I repent for my past actions. I repent for putting my trust in me instead of you, Jesus. I repent for not living life the way I was supposed to. I plead the blood of Jesus. If there be anyone in my heart that I have unforgiveness towards, I forgive them. I forgive them. I forgive them. I forgive them. Now the Lord, he's, rem he's bringing people to your memory who you may have held something in your heart against. Unforgiveness is usually one of the biggest hindrances to deliverance. So if he brings a picture, an image to your mind, just pray and let that person go. All right? All right. I'll go back. Now say, I renounce the powers of the enemy. I renounce the kingdom of Satan. I renounce every demon, every unclean spirit, every curse that has come into my life due to my past actions, due to the actions of my ancestors, due to the curse of Adam. I renounce them. I renounce every covenant that is not of God. I renounce every oath that is not of God. I renounce every soul tie and connection that is not of God. Every connection to a person, a place, or an event in my life that is not of God, I renounce it. I renounce the enemy. Now you're going to say, I declare... That I have been bought and redeemed by the blood of Jesus. I declare that I have been made a new creature in Christ and all things have passed away. I declare that all power has been given unto me. To trample upon scorpions and snakes and over every power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt me. I declare that I am covered by the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, which speaks better things on my behalf than the blood of Abel. I receive.
receive those things which Christ has released unto me. This evening, I receive my deliverance. I receive my breakthrough. I receive my healing. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Now just stay where you are. Don't pray while I pray unless it's those things I told you to do. This to my voice. I'm going to pray for you. Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit. Don't be distracted. Holy Spirit, I speak to you this evening. Your children are gathered ex- expectant of your touch. You know where they need to be set free. I pray that you go and set them free this moment in the name of Jesus. I pray that you begin to deliver them. I don't want to pray to pray, but I want you to move and touch them and set them free. Because I know it's not even by me, but it's by you. You know where they need to be touched. Deliver them. Set them free. I give you the platform this evening in the name of Jesus. Yila hagadori ila gandiga dudimba. Yin zandole iba godo ila randa amagadun zine magundo uloya. Ye gali varondo gobodin zine magadi ila haba gudo. In gadali varo ila haga diendo. Ye gali voro i gadili baduga dienda. Zahabagaduya gada. I speak to every unclean spirit. In the bodies of these people. I command you. I command you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Yeshua HaMashiach. I command you to manifest yourself. And leave. I said manifest yourself and leave. Get out. I said manifest yourself and leave. You don't have any right. You don't have any authority. You have no place in their life. He who the Son shall set free is free indeed. These children have been brought and redeemed by the blood of Jesus. You have no authority to withhold their freedom and their deliverance. Every demon from the pit of hell, leave. Every satanic deposition, leave. Get out of them. Get out. 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 I command you to leave in the mighty name of Jesus. I command you to leave in the name of Jesus. Yes, get out of them. 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 Your place is in the pit of hell, you foul spirit. You have no authority to dwell in them. You are awaiting your judgment on the last day. You have been stripped of your guards. You are made powerless. All authority, your power has been given unto me. To trample upon scorpions and snakes and every power of the enemy. And nothing shall by enemies hurt me. These signs shall follow them that believe in the name of Jesus. They shall cast out demons. I know my right and my authority. I command you to leave these children of Abraham this moment in the name of Jesus. Wherever you dwell, wherever you are, in their eye, ka ilara bahado uli. Somebody's eye is burning. Kandele badu. I released, yes, I released the fire of the Holy Spirit. Get out of them. Get out of their eye. Ka li hadole inga. So ilara ba. I tear that veil over their eyes this moment in the name of Jesus. Uli ga aliro ulo bandiga duli in zagamaga. Wherever you may be dwelling in their stomach, every unclean spirit in their bellies. The word of the Lord says, out of their bellies shall flow rivers of living water. Every hindrance and blockage be broken. 
Be broken. Be broken. I command you to leave. 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 Kali Raba Dulega. Roland Deka Dulebaga. Ko Ira Dala Badugo Dinaman Zoda Bagade. Yes, Jesus. Ye Ilara Bagudona and Zogodu. Get out of them. Get out of them. In their arm, leave. In their arm, leave, 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 leave. If you feel a sensation in your hand, just shake your hand. Shake it, shake it. Manzore bagadule. Ka ibadule magadile behango. Rele ilavure le bagadu ya gadabagal. Get out, get out, get out, get out. In their hearts, every soulish demon, every emotional spirit, you spirit of hatred and anger and resentment and unforgiveness. You spirit of rejection and fear of rejection and self-rejection. Leave my little golabata. Get out of them this moment in the name of Jesus. Yes. Release the ministering angels of God. Maharabalabaga. So they're going to draw out whatever is not of God inside of you. They're pulling it out of you. Ilabaga. Mahado, yes, 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 yes. Ilabaruhu, the angels of Elohim are pulling it out of you. I see I la baha ilorobogundo. Kida ila gabadone inzorobaga. Get out, get out, get out. Every voice contrary to the voice of God, which speaks in the air. Telling them things, telling them false doctrines, implanting thoughts into their mind. Be broken. Be broken. I silence that voice this moment in the name of Jesus. Yes. Every spirit of guilt and fear and shame and doubts and unbelief. Leave. I command you to leave this moment in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I command you to leave. 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 Yes. I break every stronghold in the realm of the spirits. I break every stronghold in the second heavens. Let every curse be broken. Every enchantment and divination and curse be overruled. Let every spell come to none effect. Let every soul tie be cut off and destroyed. Let every yoke be broken. Every generational curse be redeemed. It has been redeemed. The blood of Christ is speaking on their behalf. Be broken. Rally Bagadudebe. Ko Ilanda Bagadud. Mahabagadu, every lack of discernment, blocking their noses. Leave Maarodoloboko, every spirit, you spirit of deception. What is going on? Maharaba, Roila Bagadi, Kido Inga Nabadu, Joli Baga, you spirit of deception. Leave, 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 get out, get out, get out, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Rally Bagaduleme, Roy Gadili Gaduna Mahando, Shaila Bagadule Magadule, get out of them this moment in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The Son of Living God, Mahagadu. We're going to do something prophetic this evening. A lot of you are still receiving your deliverance, but as I was praying, the Holy Spirit told me to do this, and we've done it on the line before. We're going to do it again. I'm going to meet the line for Brother Obi. I'm going to need you to lead us in one short song. As he's leading this song, I want everybody to get some water. Go and get a bottle of water, a cup of water. Go and get a cup of water and keep it next to you by the time he's finished this song. So when he's done, I will tell you to do as the Holy Spirit has instructed me. Obi, I give it to you. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. It's not by might, it's not by power, 
but it's by my spirit, says the Lord. It's not by might, it's not by power, it's by my spirit, says the Lord, says the Lord. These mountains have been removed in Jesus' name. These mountains shall be removed in Jesus' name. These mountains shall be removed in Jesus' name. By thy spirit, says the Lord. Yes. I hope that all of you have gotten your water as the Spirit led us to. Now I want you to hold that water in your hands. Hold it in your hands. And repeat after me. Don't drink it yet. Are you thirsty? Repeat after me. In the name of Jesus, let this water be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Let it become as acid to every power of darkness that is inside of me. Let the presence of God begin to dwell in this water in the name of Jesus. I anoint it in the name of Jesus. Don't drink it yet? I'm going to pray over it. You can put me on speaker. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Holy Spirit, we are doing as you have instructed. I pray for everybody who has their water. I speak into that water. Let it become the fire of the Holy Spirit. Let it bring refreshing to their spirits, but destroy every power of the enemy which is dwelling inside of them. Let them be set free from every demonic deposition. Every stronghold of Satan, everything not of God that has been placed inside of them through them through their past life or through their sin or through their parents or through their ancestors. As they shall drink this water, let every ungodly soul tie be broken and destroyed. Let everything not of you be removed, let it be thrown up. Let them receive complete deliverance in the name of Jesus. All right. You can drink your water. Maila rabagadu kandiga badu ye anzela bagada. Yehila aro ulo go deni mando ya andele bagadu ye inza da baga. Let the fire of the Holy Spirit begin to burn in you. Yes, there it is. Let it begin to burn. 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 Ma ali kadogo bodia anza da bagure ilagada. Ri iladi baguda yando kuya angelika duya. Yehi bodo kadivando ya zilaru ubogodi kandigeba. Let everything that of God begin to give way and leave this moment in the name of Jesus. Every satanic stronghold be broken. Every demon but the pit of hell be broken. Every demonic charge be I command you to die and leave this moment. Every demonic husband and wife, every spiritual marriage be broken. Every stronghold in the realm of the spirit be broken. Every ruling spirit above their heads loose 
your grip this instant in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let there be a flow of deliverance this instant. Let the fire of God begin to engulf you from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. Let everything that of God begin to give way and die. Begin to leave. Begin to move. In the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven, on earth, on the earth. Sicknesses begin to bow. Afflictions begin to bow. Torment bow. Demons bow. Ra'ala. Lust bow. Perversion bow. Generational curses bow to the name of Jesus. Riga da baduli ingadiba. Habagadu. Send your ministering angels this evening, Holy Father. Begin to operate on them. Mahabagadu debe. Begin to operate on your children. Operate, operate, operate. He's operating on you. He's operating. He's operating. He's operating. Kali gadi mahando ye igadi livoro uli bagadi de baga. He's operating on you. Manzili guru ibaga kido ibo lugo dina anzo do bogure rihi lagado go bogunde inga labaduya. Yes, yes, yes. I command every affliction in the dreams to cease from this day. Every torment in their dreams, let the day be the last day in the name of Jesus. Every attack at the night time in the night time, let tonight be the last. It will not repeat itself after this moment in the name of Jesus. Every claim of the enemy over your life has been broken. Every open door is closed. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. Plead the blood. Get it out of you. Let it out. Let it out. Let it out. Let it out. Get it out. Don't hold it in. Manza diliba. Let it out. Let it out. Let it out. Get out. Get out of her. Get out. Get out. Get out. Maadiaba. In the name of Jesus. Leave. 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 Koya dine mazidaba. Hula adila bagudo. Get out. Mahali bagure ilagada. Mahingo du kadi bagudo ya anzide borugilienda amagado. Get out in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. And amen. Those spirits are going to continue to work in you. Maha ilagaru inda. Even after I get off the line, he's going to continue to work in you. If you feel his power, if you feel his presence upon you, you don't have to start doing everything else after you get on the line. Just sit there and let him continue to work inside of you. He's not done. He's not done. A lot of you are going to dream this night. You've been set free. You may even see the things that you've been set free from this night when you dream. He who the Son is free, set free is free indeed. Jesus, I thank you. I thank you for your flow this evening, for your delivering power. I thank you for your move this evening. Take all glory. Take all honor. Take all adoration, for it is not by power, nor is it by might, but it is by the Spirit of the living God. It is not of he that willeth, nor he that runneth, but it is of God that showeth mercy. I give you the glory, for I am but an unworthy servant. Doing that which is my duty. It's all about you, Jesus. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you continue to work in, the, in, these, in these children of Abraham all through this evening, all through this night. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. And amen.
We're going to be back on tomorrow, same time, 10 p.m. Eastern. As I said, this week, this upcoming week, is a week of activations, implantations. A lot of you are going to get the gifts that God has given to you. They're going to be stirred up and activated. So you don't want to miss any of the nights this week. Be blessed. Have a great night. Keep letting the Holy Spirit work in you if he's working in you, which I know he is. Keep letting him work in you. Be blessed. Have a great night. I'll see you tomorrow evening in the name of Jesus.